Hey everybody, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. One of the building blocks of messaging are messages, but there are different kinds of messages. There are commands and events. I'll explain the differences and show a code example because both commands and events have very distinct purposes, usage, naming, and more. I'd like to thank Solace for sponsoring this video. Solace provides a complete event streaming and management platform that makes it easier to design, deploy, and manage event-driven architecture across hybrid, multi-cloud, and IoT environments. For more on Solace, check out the link in the description. So before I compare and contrast the two, let's define first what commands and events are. So first, commands. What's their purpose? Well, their purpose is to invoke behavior. You want something to happen within your system. There's some type of capability and you wanna call it. You wanna invoke that behavior. That's a command. Now, I specifically said behaviors. I'm talking about actions. I didn't say create, update, delete as a part of CRUD. CRUD is CRUD. I'm talking about specific behaviors or capabilities that you wanna invoke. But there's two parts at play here. There's the actual message, the command, which is just the intent to invoke that behavior. And then there's the actual consumer of that intent, which actually does the execution. In the case of a command, there's one logical boundary where that consumer resides. That boundary is what also owns the schema, the definition of the command. This means that there can be multiple different logical boundaries that are actually creating and calling and sending that command to invoke that behavior. All right, so illustration time using a message broker and a queue. So we have our first sender that's creating the actual command sending it to our queue. And then from there, we have the consumer, that single consumer that actually owns the schema, the definition of that command. It basically pulls and receives to handle this message. Now doing whatever it's gonna do, it's processing it. Let's say it's interacting with the database. It does that. It tells the broker, okay, I've processed that message. We're all good, we're done. Now we can have a completely different sender, a different logical boundary do the exact same thing. It can then send a message to a queue and that same consumer is gonna pick up that message and process it. So what are events? What are their purpose? Well, events are about telling other logical boundaries or other parts of your system that something happened. Now, in terms of who consumed them, this is a little bit different because there may be no consumers. Maybe nobody cares about an event that's being published. Or maybe there are many, many different uh, consumers for that event because there's many different other parts of your system that care about a specific event. Now, who owns the event? The schema, that definition of an event is owned by a single logical boundary that's going to publish it. That means that there's only one logical boundary that's going to publish the event. That logical boundary is the one that owns it. Those consumers, they can live in other different logical boundaries. So illustration time again, we have our publisher that's creating the event, that single publisher, it's the one that owns that event, that schema for it, and it's publishing that to a topic on our broker. From there, in my illustration here, I have two consumers that I've defined. So each consumer can independently receive and consume that message and handle it whichever way it needs to. Let's say the first consumer picks it up, it needs to interact with its database, but at the exact same time, we could have a separate consumer entirely also receive that exact same message and it can interact with it however it needs to. So let's show an example that fits this all together, both commands and events. Now this is kind of a typical situation, not the only one, but just a common one. So let's say we have some type of HTTP API interacting with our browser. Our browser makes a request to our HTTP API and I'll be showing a code example of this exact situation. And let's say it's placing an order. Now we can take that order. We don't need to process it entirely. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna create a command, a place order command, and we're gonna send that to our broker to the queue. So from there, our HTTP API, once it's done that, can just return back to the browser saying, okay, great, I received your order, have fun. Now from there, we can have separately a consumer that is gonna pick up our command handler here it's the single, again, the single consumer for that command in that logical boundary that knows how to actually handle that place order command. So it then takes that message, handles it, interacts with the database, whatever it needs to do. But from there, it's gonna publish an event. So we send and we create an event. Let's say it is the order placed event back to the broker. At that point, it's done its work, it's done. Now that, that message, that event is on our topic, on our broker, and we have two different consumers that care about that order placed event. 
So just as I just illustrated, we can have different consumers interact with both these messages independently and they can consume and do whatever they need to do with them. I wanna thank all the members of my YouTube and Patreon. I really do appreciate the support. They'll be able to access all the source code that I'm about to show, as well as a private Discord server. If you're interested in joining, check out the links in the description. So here's a code example that goes through the entire workflow of what I just illustrated. So I have three logical boundaries of billing, sales, and shipping. What we're looking at right now is the HTTP API, the controller, in sales. So I'm just gonna send an HTTP request to kick this off and we'll hit the first breakpoint. So now what we're doing is we received that HTTP request, we did some work, whatever it may be. Maybe we just now wanna send that command to place the order. So let's look at that command. Now I haven't really mentioned how naming works, but in terms of commands, because you want to invoke some type of behavior, generally the way these fit is it's a verb and a noun. So, and it's explicit. So what were we trying to do here? What are we trying to evoke? We're trying to place an order. In terms of the data that you wanna capture, you really just wanna capture everything you need so our consumer can actually handle that request. So if I jump over this now, we're gonna get into the actual consumer, the handler for that place order command. And again, there's only one and this is it. So here we would be doing everything we need to do to place our order. Say that's interacting with our database, we saved some changes. And now what we wanna do is we wanna, as my example, publish an event. Now we don't need to, but I'm just trying to illustrate based on my example, is that I'm gonna publish an order placed event. Now in terms of naming for events, generally these are gonna be, they should be in the past tense, because again, we're trying to illustrate that something happened and be explicit about it. What happened? An order was placed. And the same idea here in terms of how you, the data that you wanna capture, there's different ways of dealing with this. I'll have a link in the description talking about kind of thin events, fat events, the different types of events that you can use. But what we're doing is we're publishing that order placed event. So I'm gonna kick this over. Now what we are is we can see that I'm in this billing side. I'm in the, this billing boundary because when an order is placed, we have this consumer in a different logical boundary that maybe needs to charge our customer's credit card or create some type of invoice. So we do some work here and it's completely separate. Then I have a completely separate boundary in shipping, which needs to handle also that order placed event. It needs to consume it. So it can do some work, maybe like creating our shipping label, whatever the case may be. And it's doing that work independently. So to compare and contrast, commands are about in the intent to invoke behavior. Well, events are about telling other logical boundaries that something happened. In terms of ownership and who owns the kind of the schema of that message, for a command, it's owned by the consumer. Again, there's only one consumer for a command. For an event, who owns that is who publishes the event. In terms of consumers, for a command, there's only one consumer. For events, there could be zero or many different consumers. In terms of who sends the message, for a command, there can many be many different logical boundaries that send a command. For events, there's only one logical boundary that will publish an event. And in terms of naming, for a command, it's usually generally a verb and a noun. And for events, it's past tense, but be explicit. So hopefully this explained and illustrated the differences and the purposes between commands and events. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.